Good morning to you. <clears throat> Another sunny day. And it's uh, Maundy Thursday, the Thursday before Easter. And uh, I was trying to think this morning, what shall I talk about? Because there's so much in the Gospels about uh, the events around the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples. In John's Gospel, right from chapter 13 onwards, there is so much teaching. And so it's so rich and so full. Um, uh, uh, apart from the institution of the Last Supper, or what we, some people call the Holy Communion, um, that's very special remembrance meal that we all delight to share in, um, reminding us of what Jesus did for us. Um, but I was thinking, um, I, was re I was remembering, uh, when, when I was lead chaplain in uh, South London in the hospital there, uh, every Monday, Thursday, we, we used to have a service and I used to, as lead chaplain, um, wash everybody's feet on my knees in front of them. Uh, I take their shoes off um, and I just pour water on them, have a towel and a bowl. And, uh, and it was to actually do it yourself, as Jesus did for his disciples. He wash their feet it's it, it, it it's a very moving experience it really touches your inner heart because I was doing that for the people that I led all those people who served with me in the hospital as chaplaincy volunteers as chaplaincy staff my secretary um, my assistant chaplain my second in command as it were and as their leader I reenacted that and it is a it is a very very powerful reminder of what Christian leadership is all about. Christian leadership is about being a servant to all, taking the menial place, taking the lower place, as Jesus took the lower place. Philippians two tells us how he emptied himself. He he took the lowest place. He became the servant of all. And he said, I've shown, done this for you as an example. If you've never done it, it's, it's something to do. If you live in the house with somebody um, uh, at the moment, perhaps today you could each wash each other's feet um, and imagine that you are, well, and just s symbolically imitate what Jesus did. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. We're not meant to lord it over each other. We're meant to be servants. Um, but then he goes on to tell, there's so much in these chapters. There's, there's um, Jesus telling them ab about in his father's house, there are many mansions. That there's a place being prepared for you and for me by him. And he will come and take us home when the time comes. And then he says those wonderful words. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father but by me. There's no way to God. There's no, there's no way in without Jesus. It's, it's stark. A lot of people argue it away and say things like, well, God is so loving, he would never turn anyone away. Um, but, but sin has to be paid for. And Jesus did that for us. And he said that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And I'm reminded, as I'm talking to you, of... Um, when there was a, I don't know how many years ago it was, but uh, various personalities read portions of the scripture and the whole scripture was read sequentially uh, by different uh, people of significance. And I remember Prince Charles, uh, the heir to our throne here in England, Great Britain. Um, <clears throat> I remember he chose to read those verses from John 14 that include Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He chose the portion that he was going to read, and I felt that that was ever so significant. And then there's all that wonderful teaching from Jesus about the Holy Spirit, who was going to come um, and live and be in each of us um, and remind us of all the things that he has told us and taught us and help us when things are difficult, when we didn't know what to say or what to do. The Holy Spirit can be relied upon to give us the words and direct us in the right way. And then there's a lovely passage in uh, John 15, 
about the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Abide in me, and I abide in you. And uh, I'm going to conclude just with the thought that Jesus said, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit given to us will never leave us. It's one reason why when, when I was in the Anglican Church quite a long time ago, I never, I never said the response, um, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, which, which is in one of the um, services. Uh, because I know that it's been promised that that will never happen, that God will never take away his Spirit from us. Once we've been filled with his Spirit, um, we, we will never be left bereft and, and alone. And Jesus taught us to be servants, but he said, then straight, almost after that, he said, love one another. And I don't call you servants, I call you friends. We are his friends. And as his friends, we can talk to him about all the difficulties we're facing, all the things that worry us, all the anxieties we have, and leave them at the foot of the cross. Let him bear it for you. We were not designed to carry the weight of fear and worry and anxiety that many of us carry. It's why a lot of us are sick, because we carry on ourselves um, things that he will carry for us, quite willingly. He will carry all our worries and all our anxieties and all our fears for us, because he has faced the worst and conquered it. And uh, we're on the victory side. Um, as, as we often say, we know, who, we know who scored the winning goal. The victory is won, and we'll be thinking tomorrow about Good Friday. And uh, it's Easter. It's, 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 the, it's the weekend that changed the history of the world. It was not a mistake that before Jesus it was B.C. And after Jesus it was A.D. He is the one who changed history forever. This weekend that we're celebrating changed history. It changed, it changed everything. It's the pivotal moment. Um, think on these things. And we'll talk again tomorrow. Bye-bye.